Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guessed from the title, I'm gonna be back testing a couple of assets to see what kind of price action we get the date the Fed gives out their statement. So I'm using this calendar from investing.com to test a couple of dates of interest. And for this back test, I chose a couple of assets that kind of give me a macro picture instead of individual stocks, which will most likely follow the index. So I'm gonna be back testing these six assets and I'm gonna see what happens the day the statement is released, the day after, three days after five days after and a week later and for each of those holding periods we're gonna get these stats the first thing I'm interested in is the average return the day the statement is released so for gold we see that on average it ends slightly higher but not by much we're also gonna calculate the standard deviation so we can get our up and down ranges if the returns are normally distributed we would have a 68% chance that the return falls within these two numbers the range is just the difference between up and down we also get our up chance and down chance which the up chance is just the number of times it closed higher out of the dates it looked at. So gold in this instance closed higher 64% of the time. And I think I looked at 14 different periods. So approximately nine out of the 14 that I took a look at gold closed higher the date the statement was released. The down chance is the opposite of that and close to 36%. That means five out of the 14 that we took a look at gold closed down. And that's how you would read this table. You could take a look at other periods such as the seven day return. And you can distinguish by period. So here we have red seven for the seven day return, whereas here we have red zero for the actual day the statement was released. So let's close out these tables and we'll take a look at the script. These are the packages we're going to require in the script. If you wanna take a look at the calendar, you can follow this link. As I previously mentioned, I only took a look at these 14 dates, but at investing.com they provide many more dates in case you wanna back test those as well. So we're gonna go ahead and run this line. Since these are character, I'm just gonna convert these to dates. Since this vector of dates has dates that are in the future, I'm going to subset the dates that are in the past. So I only want dates that are less than the current date. Well, since the Fed changed its tone this year and started increasing rates, we're gonna go ahead and backtest Fed releases for this year only. So if you only wanna take a look at this year's, just run this line that's commented out. So again, we're only gonna take a look at this year and see what happens to the six assets. If you wanna add your own, you could just add to the list. All right, so we're gonna assign the tickers we want to backtest. We're gonna create a new environment to store all of our data from Yahoo Finance. And by running this line, we're gonna get data for the six assets starting October 15th of 2020. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that line. After we get the data, we're gonna extract all the adjusted closes and merge all the data together. Now, since Bitcoin trades 24 seven, I only want trading days according to the NYSE. So in this next line, we're just gonna limit those trading days. And in this way, all of our data will be consistent across these six assets. So let's go ahead and run that line. I'm gonna remove the dot adjusted from the column names. And I'm gonna reassign my stock names by using the column names in this XTS object. Now for the actual back test, we're gonna use L apply and pass in a list of all of our assets into this function, which if we open this up, the first thing we do is calculate the daily return for the asset we pass in. And then we're gonna use another L apply and pass in the list of dates, which are the FOMC dates into this function. So again, let's open up this function. And this is where all the calculations are made. So by using these dates, the first thing I will do is extract the return, the date of the statement. I'm gonna extract the closing price, the date of the statement release, and that'll get saved into this variable called median PRC. And we're gonna use that price to get the returns for one day, three day, five day, and seven days after the statement release. For the cases where we see day, I'm just extracting the closing price, the number of days forward, using K to represent that. So for day one, we would have K equal to one. For day seven, we would have a K equal to seven. So if you wanna test different dates, you can add or replace some of this code. And once I get the prices for each day, I'm gonna calculate the return. So for day one, for instance, I would divide closing price a day after over the closing price of when the statement was released. So we have RET one for the first day, RET three, for the return three days after and so on. After we get our returns, I'm just gonna combine them and return them as a data frame. So here you'll see all of our returns. I'm also going to be adding the date, which is the release date. Also the symbol, since I'm gonna be grouping all of the returns for all the assets I've requested into a single data frame. So this way we could distinguish the statistics for each asset. And then finally just return that data frame. So it'll calculate all the returns for all the dates we pass in. And once we extract 
extract all the returns, I'm gonna row bind all of our results. So this is what we will be returning. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And we're gonna go ahead and run that block. Now we're gonna go ahead and row bind all of our results. Let's run this next line and we'll take a look at DT for backtest. All right, so each row represents a different statement release date, and we see that for each we get our returns. Now that we have this table, we can calculate statistics. So back in our script, from this table, we're gonna extract the symbols. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this line. And for each of the symbols, we're gonna apply this function, which is a very simple function. The first thing we need to do is subset by the symbol. So we're gonna subset our table and only look at the returns for the stock we are passing in. Next, we calculate the means for each of the columns or different periods. That's gonna get assigned to average. Now for each of the different periods, we're gonna also calculate our standard deviation. And now that we have our average and standard deviation, we can get the up and down moves the range, which is just the difference between these two, the probabilities or winning percentage of an up move and down move. And these are just the number of times we close positive or negative for each of the release dates. Once we have these statistics, we can go ahead and combine these as a data frame. We're gonna add a column so that we can distinguish what period these returns are for, and also going to add our symbol as a column, and then finally just return that data frame. So let's go ahead and minimize this and run it. Now we can row bind all of our statistics together. And if we take a look at res, we have 30 different observations. And now we can use this table to group by period. So let's take a look at what happens to each of these assets. The statement is released. So as we know, the Fed has been increasing rates. And if we take a look at the 10 year, for instance, there's only a 50, 50% 50 chance leaving us at neutral. But I think the probabilities are split just because the market kind of anticipates the up move. But if we take a look at another asset, such as the S&P, so far this year on statement release dates, we see that it has closed up 75% of the times. It has basically moved higher three out of the four times. We see that the average return on these days are usually about one and a half percent. From the previous day, we have our standard deviation, which is slightly less than the average, giving us a 68% chance if these returns were normally distributed of closing between close to 3% to flat on statement release dates, which gives us a 2.7% range. Inversely, we see that the VIX closed lower three out of the four times with an average move of being down close to 8%. Our standard deviation is 7%, giving us a 68% chance that it will fall between these two values. But let's take a look at what happens seven trading days later. So if we run this last line, so let's sort these by up chance. So seven trading days later, we see the 10 year, the Euro and the S&P have historically closed higher while Bitcoin, gold and the VIX are closing lower. So for the S&P, we see that on average, it has closed up approximately 1% and it also gives us a 68% chance that it falls between a positive 6% to being down close to four. All right guys, well now you have a general idea of how these assets perform after a statement release and you will be able to also calculate these for any assets that you choose. Since we have our next statement release next week, I thought it would be interesting to see if we could find any patterns. Well guys, this concludes the video. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description area to the Patreon where you can find this script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.